One of the main concerns on desktop Linux when using it as a daily driver is battery life. Linux can sometimes be really good for battery life, for example on regular notebook PCs where integrated graphics are the only graphics solution. However, battery life on gaming laptops on Linux is nothing short of terrible. By default, most Linux distributions don't come with any battery saving features, on gaming laptops at least, and this gets only worse the more complex distribution you choose. In today's video, I am going to be showing you how to increase your battery life while using Linux on gaming laptops. Quick disclaimer, I made this guide specifically for my distribution of choice, which is Arch Linux. If you're running another distribution, your mileage may vary and certain programs on this list won't run on that distribution. Before we start, I want to give a quick rundown on my gaming laptop specs. I have a Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3 from 2021. It has a Ryzen 5 4600H with 16GB of RAM and a dedicated GPU, the GTX 1650Ti. As you can guess, battery life on a budget gaming laptop from 2021 is not exactly great. On Windows, I would be lucky to get even 3 hours of battery life. This is even worse on Arch Linux with default settings. Using the default settings, I get just over 2 hours of battery life, which is completely unacceptable. The average school day for me lasts 5 hours and 20 minutes of instruction time. That means I have to find some way to make my laptop last at least 4 hours as not all of my classes require my computer. Here's how I did it. The first one is one that most people don't consider and it's the refresh rate of your screen. Modern laptops, especially gaming oriented ones, come with a refresh rate of around 144 to 240 hertz. This seems nice until you realize that this is one of, if not the biggest drain on battery life there is. Setting your refresh rate to 60 hertz will dramatically increase battery life. On most distributions, all you have to do is type xrander-r60 hertz, 60.00 into a terminal and it will change the refresh rate Bruh. of your screen. But for some reason, specifically when I'm using X11, the screen will go all wonky like this. So I'm basically forced to use Wayland so I can actually set my screen's refresh rate to 60 hertz. However, your mileage may vary. The second one is turning down the brightness. I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent here and say that 15 to 20 percent of brightness is more than enough when working indoors. Of course, this is maybe different for everyone. However, this is what I have found in my testing of trying to get the best battery life. I don't know about other DEs. However, on KDE Plasma, you can set it so that every time the charger is unplugged, the brightness automatically turns down to 20% without any manual intervention. The past few methods have mostly been solutions already provided out of the box by Linux. However, the next method requires installing a program called Optimus Manager. You might want to skip this one if you're running another distribution not based on Arch Linux. This program allows you to disable and enable the external graphics card and set settings as to which one you want to use at which time. For example, I have it set so that the computer boots in integrated graphics mode when booting on battery and hybrid mode when booting in power. It is important to note that the functionality comes comes with Pop OS by default, however Optimus Manager is only compatible with Arch based distributions like I'd said and won't work if you're running Ubuntu or Fedora. To install simply type in yay-s Optimus Manager, Optimus Manager Qt to install the program and replace that last one with Qt KDE if you're on KDE. Once installed, you should see an icon that looks like an Nvidia GPU in your system tray. To switch to integrated graphics, right click it and select switch to integrated. And as you can see, when the integrated GPU option is selected, your Nvidia driver will be disabled and you will be able to save a lot of battery life. If you want to enable it at boot, go to settings and set up set startup mode to auto. This will set it so that it switches to integrated on boot. The only disadvantage is that Wayland does doesn't work properly with this tool, it actually warns you every time you're switching that it's not supported by Wayland, but otherwise it is actually pretty foolproof. The last method is likely the most effective and it's by using another program that you have to install. It's called Auto CPU Frequency and this tool works on every version of Linux. The program uses the profiles inside of the Linux kernel to limit power consumption and increase battery life. Simply just download it using the instructions in the GitHub link in the description. Once you've downloaded it, run sudo, sudo auto cpu frec install to activate the auto power saver. And this is what takes the battery life to maybe three and a half hours to the full five hours. This program makes the Linux kernel do all the heavy lifting for saving battery life by making it assign power profiles depending on if you're 
you're on battery or if you're on power. And this makes it very efficient and very effective. So finally, I want to show the difference between a non-optimized system and an optimized one. The one on the left is my laptop without any modifications, and the one on the right is my laptop with all the above modifications. Here, I'm just looping a YouTube video, which is a pretty moderate use case. And as you can see, battery life on the optimized laptop is much better, with the optimized laptop getting literally double the battery life. This is a huge gain. It turns my Linux like gaming laptop into a machine I can actually use throughout the school day, rather than a laptop that I have to plug into the wall halfway through the day. All right, so this is the end of the video. I hope you guys benefited from how to optimize battery life on Linux. I'll see you all next time.